Hey guys, welcome back for another lit review. Today we'll be continuing our journey through the biomechan biomechanical evaluation of first ray. As a review on the first part, we talked about how Pronus longus, through his attachment to the lateral side of the first metatarsal and medial cuneiform, it is able to plantar flex and evert those bones in contraction to allow a transfer of torsional force proximally to distally to compress the bones in the medial column, such as first metatarsal, medial cuneiform, navicular, and talus, to compress and allow the ligament to tighten and stabilize the medial column. Stabilization of medial column is super important in human gait cycle because it allows proper entrance into propulsion. Because when, you, when you're lifting your heel up, you need to have your foot to be a rigid lever, or else you'll have laxity and you the force to force will be transferred differently on the foot and cause something like diff, uh, bunion or pain and such. So that was the first part of it. Now the second part titled the metatarsus primus varus as a cause of hypermobility, a three-dimensional kinematic analysis in the cadaver model. It's kind of continuation evaluation, a continuation of that uh, evaluation. Now this is written by Dr. Christensen Johnson like the first part, but it is added on by Dr. Rush. So what are they talking about? What is metatarsus primus varus? So some of you may already uh, know what is a bunion. Bunion is basically where your toe looks like this. This is your big toe, this is your metatarsal that looks like this. So oftentimes a bunion is described as, and medically described as hallux abductor valgus and that describes basically how the big toe is deviating away from the middle end of the body with a little bit of a, a rotation in the frontal plane. Metatarsus primus varus is basically the description of this metatarsal part of the bunion, which is first metatarsus, metatarsus primus, varus, meaning there's rotation, internal rotation, uh, towards the, uh, the midline of the body. This is basically, another way to read the title is basically a bunion as a cause of hypermobility. So, also, that bunion, if you take a look at a bunion, there's an increased angle between the first metatarsal and the second metatarsal. And that is, that is the main crux of this experiment. But before we get into that, let's talk about the soft tissue structure that the authors focused on. One of the main things that stabilize a medial column when you're walking is plantar aponeurosis. Plantar aponeurosis is kind of like a fascia, kind of like a ligament thing that starts from the calcaneal tuberosity and it goes deep into the, uh, the toes. And some of it goes into the fat pads and a plantar plate and even into the sesamoid and the first metatarsal phalangeal joint, a joint that basically defines the first ray, right? Allow the dorsiflexion and plantar flexion of the first toe. So the job of a plantar aponeurosis is to stabilize the medial column, like I said, and the way it does that is what we call the windless effect. And windless effect is a very simple concept where you have a rope or string attached from two points, in this case, the calcaneal tuberosity and the first metatarsal phalangeal joint in the sesamoid. And if you tighten that rope, could say that you imagine the rope continues on to the big toe, and this is the big toe. Say that this is the calcaneal tuberosity, this is the first metatarsal phalangeal, this is the big toe. If you go like this, you see how this part becomes tight? You can even see it in my thumb, essentially. So when you dorsi flex, it tightens, and what happens is that in a foot, it arches up. And that's again because it creates a rigid lever to enter, enter into propulsion properly. Now, if you have a deformity like in Bunyan, what happens is the angle is greater and they, the authors of this paper wanted to see if there's an effect or difference in how much, how much you could basically stabilize. And the way they did it was they created a little metatarsal jig where they could control the angle between the first two. So they got six fresh frozen cadaver models and they uh, applied proper pressure, pressure and measured the plantar flexion, dorsiflexion in four points, metatarsal head, base, medial cuneiform, and, uh, and uh, second metatarsal. And when they dorsiflex and plantar flex, when the angles were, were great between the first and second metatarsal, they noticed that they didn't get much change in the angle, up and down. But when they corrected the angle using the metatarsal jig, the up and down angles were, uh, after it was correction, it was pretty good. It was more. And what that means is if you were able to dorsiflex more, you could use, take advantage of the windless mechanism in the foot. And by using the windless mechanism, you can tighten the medial column and stabilize the first ray, which allows stabilization of the first ray, uh, allows your 
effort to enter into proportion. So that was that was the basic gist of this paper. Planar aponeurosis um, attaches to the metatarsal phalangeal, first metatarsal phalangeal joint, and by using how much dorsiflex and plantar flex, they were able to say that if you have a too much of a wide inner metatarsal angle, you can't really dorsiflex and plantar flex, therefore it leads to hypermobility because it can't be a rigid lever. So that was, I think that's kind of like a brief summary of it. One thing to note is they originally had seven cadaver models, but they excluded one because of valgus rotation of the first metatarsal. I understand that this paper was published 2000 and they were just simply trying to understand how when this mechanism kind of helps stabilize the medial column. So they may not have needed to uh, think twice about this, but nowadays they, there are a new procedure called the lapiplasty, which is a bunion correction form that allows correction of the bunion through correcting that value. So it is, you can't just skimp away on the, the frontal plane deforming that is happening in a bunion. And one more thing is that since the widened angle of the intermetatarsal angle is the culprit behind how you get a hypermobile first wave, which is bad, uh, a lot of procedures today like an Austin or a Lap Lapidus or a McBride will basically try to correct this intermetatarsal angle and bring it back together. That allows the plantar aponeurosis to properly function and stabilize the medial column for proper gait cycle. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, tune in for our next one.